Now, here's today's date. This is the left-hand page of my Franklin Planner, right? I have the appointment schedule and I have the prioritized daily task list. Now, in planning out today, now, you realize that this is just an example, right? So when I plan my day for today, let's say that I'm going to check email, normally takes me about 45 minutes. Um, since yesterday, I didn't get a chance to do it. Normally it takes me 30 minutes, I'm giving myself a little extra time, so I'm doing that from 8.15 to 9 o'clock. Um, we have a communi communication plan team meeting uh, from 10 to 11, and then from 11.30 to 12.30, I'm meeting with Angela Stevens. Now in the afternoon, my afternoon's wide open today, it's just one of those weird things, but what can I guarantee in the afternoon? Interruptions, right? because I'm guaranteed I'm gonna have those. So, when I look at this, to do my planning realistically, how much time do I have? There's 45 minutes that's gone, there's an hour that's gone, there's an hour that's gone, so there's two hours and 45 minutes. Three hours of my day is now gone. Let's say we work from eight to five just for demonstration, and normally we'd take an hour for lunch, okay? So, if, if we work from eight to five, we have eight hours, three of it's already gone, that means I only have this much time to do tasks, right? Because of the interruptions, how much of that will I actually see? And that's normally what people say is about half. So let's say, let's be optimistic and say I'm gonna see three hours. So I'm only gonna plan three hours worth of task. Doesn't that make sense? If that's all the time I will see, that's all the plan that I will, or task I will plan. Okay, so I'm just gonna make a list of these, thinking about how long these tasks would take. Some of them don't take very long. And I make a list of tasks, and then I'm gonna prioritize these. Remember the steps? Make a realistic list, give them value, and then give them more. So here's the, let's give them the A, B, C. Now, A was what? Vital. Vital. B was? Important. C was? Optional. Optional. Okay, so daily planning. We're gonna give that an A. Until I, that becomes a habit for me, the daily planning is the most important part of my day. Okay, buy the gift. I messed up. I was supposed to do something for my bride and I didn't. And now I'm in the doghouse. So on my way home tonight, I'm gonna to buy her some daisies. That's her gift, she loves daisies. Just makes her happy. Okay, A, B, or C. It's an A, right? Okay, call literacy administrator. That is with project we're working on. That's an A, because we're up against the deadline. Finalize the report. I got a jump start on that, and that's a B. If I don't get to that, that's okay, but it's important that I do it today. Reading the professional journal is a B. Wendy is a C, because she said, could you help me with just get this information? It's not really pressing. Um, she says, but maybe I can find it on my own. So I give her a C. Call the travel agent is a B. 10 pages of the Building Better Teams book. What is that? It's an A, right? Because that ties into personal goals. And then 20 minutes of elevated heart rate. A. Okay, so we've given them value. Now let's give them order. Let's look at, we have five A's. Okay, which of those would be first? If I do my planning in the morning. Right? If I do my planning at night, that would be A5. Does that make sense? Sequence. Okay, so let's give it A1. Um, what's next? Now, by the gift, I'm doing that on my way home. Literacy administrator, the 10 pages I'm doing in the morning, because, or, or I'm reading that to, um, that winds me down at night. And so the 20 minutes of elevated heart rate, I do that in the morning before I go to work as well. So I'll give that the A2. Does that make sense? So I'm just thinking through, okay, what's the order for these? Then I'll call the literacy administrator as soon as I get to work. Um, on my way home from work, I'll buy the gift, get the flowers. And then tonight, just before I go to bed, I'll read the 10 pages to wind down and that relaxes me. Okay, of the bees. Um, I want to call the travel agent first, then I'll finalize this, the report, and then I'll read the professional journal, and uh, there's one C, so it gets C1. Easy enough? I mean, you just get in that mode, you do it very quickly. 
Now, notice we're do the prioritizing here and these symbols at the top of your page. We're just going to cover what each of those stand for. So we've just done our daily planning. That's all complete. So we just put a check in the box. Does that make sense? This check means that we've taken care of it. I do my 20 minutes of elevated heart rate. I do my exercise right after I've done my plan. So I get a check in the box for A2. Now, A3, call a literacy administrator. Um, when I call, I get a message saying that, that she is tied up in training until Monday. So I'm going to call her Monday. It won't worry about it today. So I'm going to move. What do I do? I plan her forward. So what's my first step? Before I put the arrow, what must I do? OK, so I'm going out to Monday. So how long will it take me to find Monday's date? OK, let's see. There's um, Monday's right there, the 20th. See, five seconds and I'm there. And so I've gone out. I've written it down here. Now I come back and put the arrow. Make sure you go out and write it on the next day ahead before you put the arrow. I had a couple of times learning this the hard way where I put the arrow, then my phone rang. I'm distracted. I have a conversation. I go about my business. Don't ever put it out there. But the arrow tells me that I have. And they fall through the cracks. Make sure you get in the habit of going out, writing it down on the day you're going to do it. Then come back and put the arrow. The arrow's kind of like your mini check mark, telling you you've planned that ahead. OK. Um, let's see, so A4 is next, but we're doing that on the way home, so let's go to B1. I'm going to delegate this task. Instead of doing it on my own, I'm going to delegate this task to Betsy. And so I simply put Betsy's initial out here to the side of the box. Now, once I talk to Betsy and she says she'll take care of this for me, I now put the circle there that tells me she's accepted responsibility. Now, each time I look at this during the course of the day, that tells me that it requires some follow-up, doesn't it? I've delegated to Betsy. She's working on it. Haven't heard back yet. If I'd heard back, what would I have in the circle? A check mark. OK. Um, B2. As I start working on the, start finalizing the report, I get an interruption. We're guaranteed those every day, right? We decided that. So. My manager needs a copy of the Jones file. And I'm saying, OK, when do you need this by? And he said, well, we need it right now before our meeting's done. And so what priority does this get? This is an A, right? And so I draw a line where my original list ends. I always draw a line right there, which tells me this is stuff I've added during the course of the day. That's just something that I do. It kind of gives me a feel of what gets dumped on me as I go through the course of the day. I, I, I give that an A. And what's the sequence on this? <coughs> One, we've done. Two, we've done. Three, we've moved forward. Four is coming up. So it, I'll give it another A3. Now, to tell me that I've got another A3, I just put a little asterisk beside my two A3s. So see, if I'm looking at my list saying what to do next, and I look at the A3, and then go on to A4 instead of skipping this. That tells, oh, there's another one of these. And that sends me to copying the Jones file. It, it's just a dumb little thing that I do. That I've learned how to tweak that. So, I, so the, the finalizing the report so I don't forget to come back to it, I just put a dot there. It tells me that's been started. Now, once I copy the Jones file, give that to my manager, I get a check in the box for A3. OK, um, <clears throat> let's see. Um, B2, oh, in the process um, of speaking with my manager, Wendy walked by and she said, by the way, I found the information. Don't worry about it. So what are we going to give her? Yeah, I could <laughs> cheat and give her a check because the checks are high morphine potency, right? <laughs> That's the endorphins. Um, but I didn't really do anything, so I put the X. The, the X is designed there. If you want to put the check, go ahead and cheat. It's fine. <laughs> OK. Um, now I finalize the sales or the finalize the report. The dot will disappear with a check. 
Next is B3, I read the professional journal, I get a check in the box for B3. Now we have three things left. What are they? Okay, the gift, right? And what else? The travel agent has to be dealt with, right? Because that circle is still open and reading the 10 pages. Now I realize that Betsy's not gonna get back to me today, so I'm gonna go over to tomorrow's date and write her name in there. And once I have her out on tomorrow's date to follow up with her, what do I put in the circle? The arrow, right? We've now planned that forward to another day. Excellent. I buy the gift on the way home. I get a check in the box for A4. And then I read the 10 pages of the book before I go to bed and I get the check there. Now, that's a pretty good day, right? Got a lot of stuff done, important stuff. We added one or two things. Uh, are you all okay with the basic symbols? Okay. Now, here are the three things that give me the best return on my investment for me. Buy the gift, because it's repairing a relationship, right? The 10 pages of the building better teams and the 20 minutes of the elevated heart rate. Why do they give me the highest return? Because they come back to my goals, right? And tied directly to my governing values. Okay, excellent. Okay, right hand page. Tom Green is a business associate of mine, and he calls me on the phone. So I simply open my planner out to the right-hand page of today's day, and on the right-hand side, I write number one, Tom Green. Okay? Here's what he tells me. There's a meeting in his office on the 9th of August from 9 to 11. He gives me the location, the address of the office. We're holding the meeting. He wants me to invite Jane and bring a copy of the report. Okay, now I've captured the information. I wanna be able to have it come back by itself. So we're gonna walk through this process called the 30 second rule. Anyone wanna guess why I call it the 30 second rule? It comes after the 31st rule. No, I'm kidding, <laughs> no, you're right. It takes me half a minute to do it. The idea of this is it's done very quickly. Okay, so let's, oh, and I like to jot down for me, I'd like to just jot down what time it was we had the conversation because I can have a little bit of fun with that as well. Or they say, well, I don't remember when we talked. Well, I could go back and say, well, it was on the 16th of July. It was on Thursday at 2.10 in the afternoon. Oh, what happens to my credibility, <laughs> right? Okay, so here's the 30-second rule. We ask these three questions about this information. Does this information have a date that I will need this? Is it an appointment? Is it time specific? <clears throat> Does it require me to be there? Are there tasks associated with it? It's that simple. Okay, in fact, let me, let me put it up here so we can walk through this together with it. Which color do I want? I want this one. Okay, so number one, date. Number two, is it an appointment? <coughs> Number three, are there tasks? Okay, let's walk through it. Does number one have a date? When is it? Now you're gonna have to participate with me, haul her stuff out. When is it? August 9th. Okay, August 9th. Is it an appointment? Okay, so I want to go to my monthly calendar. Now, where's my monthly calendar? Turn in your planner to the monthly calendar for August. Have it right there? So in August, on the 9th, I go out and I put Tom's name, 9 o'clock, and I reference in parentheses to 716-1, which is the date and the item number on the daily record of events page. Okay? the parentheses will always send me back to my original information. July the 16th, item number one. Does that make sense? Okay, three months, right? So I have the current month, the previous to reference back to information I've written in the planner and a month ahead to plan ahead into. So do I have this page in my planner? Do I have August pages in there? 
Okay, so August 9th is right there, less than five seconds. And so here's my calendar, my to-do list. So I'm going to go out here and I'm going to write Tom at 9 o'clock and block out the two hours of this meeting. Again, referencing back to July 16th. Tom's office, I figure, is going to take me almost a half hour to get there. So I like to just block out a half hour ahead and a half hour after just to give me that time to travel. Okay. Um, where else would we put this on a calendar? Are you guys using Microsoft Outlook to schedule meetings? Would I make sure that it was an Outlook? If other people need access to your schedule, you'll have a duplicate calendar. Otherwise, we say no duplicate calendars, but we can't do that now. We have to communicate that with other people, whether we do it online, whether we do it on your phone, however you do that. If you have an electronic calendar, make sure you keep it current. Okay? Question number two, or question number three. Are there tasks associated with this? What's the first one? Invite Jane. Okay, let's do that Monday. Is that okay? So let's go out to Monday's date, which is the 20th of July, and I'm going to put Jane's name there in reference to July 16th, item number one. That's all I need because of where is it going to send me. On Monday when I do my planning, I'll look at that and say, what's Jane's name doing here? And right, it will send me back. Okay, what are my other tasks? Now, the report's pretty much finished off. I just want to take a look at it and make sure I have access to it before I go to the meeting. So I'm going to do that three days before. Is that okay? So let's go three days prior, which would be what date? August 6th. So we go to the 6th of August. I write ABC report and reference back to the original information. Okay? Each time the parentheses sending me back here. Have we taken care of everything now? So I put a check beside number one. When I look at the right-hand page of my planner for information that's there, so when I look at yesterday, the four entries that I have in here for yesterday, I have a check mark beside all four of them, which means that I've done the 30-second rule with all of that. It's out where it needs to go. If when I do my planning in the morning, I look at this and one of those is not checked, it means I need to finish and take care of it. Does that make sense? That's just my checks and balance, <laughs> no pun, checks and balance system. Right? Okay. When's the first time that we're sent back to this information? First time. Monday. What's going to show up Monday when I do my planning? Now say, why, Jane, why is Jane here? Where does it send me to find out? Back four days to the 16th, and how long does it take me to find that? Five seconds. Tops. Right? And there's the information. Oh, that I need to invite Jane to this meeting. Okay, when's the next time it comes back? On the 6th of August, right, when the ABC report shows up, but again sends me back to this page. Now, where will this page be in August? Still in my planner, right, because I have the previous month to reference back to. So five seconds, I'm back to the original information. Okay, what if this information, so are you all okay with that? Yeah. The thought process? Okay, what happens if instead of August 9th, this meeting's on October 9th? Okay, let's walk through it then. It has a date, right? So let's, let's go through. 30 second rule. Does this have a date? October 9th. Is it an appointment? So we'll go to the monthly for October and we'll put in the reference, right? Everybody with me there? Okay, where else am I going to put it? I put it on the monthly. Do I have this page in my planner right now? Where is it? Three ring storage binder. Now I was going to bring my storage binder so I could show you, for, so that with the video they could see. That's my three ring storage binder. That's where I keep all of my pages before and after. How many pages, uh, how many months worth of pages do I keep in my storage binder? Nine, Nine 12 ultimately when I'm all done with it, right? Yeah. So I have anything planned further ahead. 
Now I have an option. I can go ahead, I can grab my store. Where do, where do I keep my storage binder? Easy access. Easy access. Where, you plan. Yeah. where I do my planning, right? So I do mine at home, so my storage binder's on my bookshelf at home. So I'm doing my planning, I take the bookshelf, uh, off the bookshelf and I open up to this page and I write Tom and block out the three hours there. Okay, now what's my other option? What if when I'm doing this, I don't have access to my storage binder? Okay, I could put it on my monthly master task list. That's actually, I hadn't thought of that before. Good idea. Or what will I not do here? I won't check number one. So when I'm on the road, if I have something that goes out further than the month I have in here, when I get home, I wanna check, just make sure all the numbers are checked on the daily record of events page. Because if, if there's not a check by one of those, it means I've still got to do something with that one before I earn the right to check it off. Does that make sense? Okay. So October 9th, we've gone out to October. Um, when are we going to invite Jane to this meeting in October? Still Monday, right? We want to let her know as soon as we can. So we go out there, put Jane down. What's, what's my other task? What is it? The report. ABC report. Okay. Now, the ABC report, we're going to give this a week. Since it's that far out, I want to check on it a week in advance to make sure that we're all set with it if it needs some work. Is that okay? So I go to October 2nd, which is a week before October 9th, right? And I put remind Jane, which is one thing I want to do, right? Because over the course of a couple of three months, she may have forgotten about it, so I want to remind her that we're going to this meeting and ABC report, both referencing back to July 16th. Now, where will this page be in October? In my three ring storage binder, right? And where is that? Where I do my planning, yeah. So I have access to it. Make sense? Okay, so now I can check that off, can't I? I've got everything out there, it's gonna come back when I want it to. So when's the first time this comes back? First time? Monday, Monday when Jane shows up, right? When's the next time? A week, a week before on the 2nd of October when I remind Jane and get the, make sure the ABC report is ready to go. Okay, but each time the parentheses send me back to this. Are you all okay with that? Yeah. The parentheses are killer. I mean, when I learned that, it was like, oh, whatever it is. What's the word I'm trying to think? Okay. Now, what if, what if the information isn't written on the right-hand page of my planner? What if I'd got an email with this information? Can I still walk through it this way? I would still put the entry out there, wouldn't I? I would still put Tom in my calendar, but my reference might be this, which this is an email on July 16th. Now, I still have to scroll through the 16th, right, of July, but it makes it a lot easier to find that. And if the information is there, why would I copy it? I'll just reference to it. Or it may be here. Any guesses what that is? A what folder? You were right. The file folder, right? This could be in a file folder where I keep all the information on a given project. So I'm in a reference to, and I keep them chronologically ordered, so I'd find that very simply, wouldn't I? Take the folder out, open it up, and there's the information. Now, this doesn't have to be paper. This could be electronic folder, couldn't it? Helps me find it very quickly. Or it could be here. You ever get information on texts? Just reference to it. It's in your phone, isn't it? Leave it there and reference to it. Could be here, perhaps. Gunjan Doshi is a guy that we're working with, Tom and I, and it could be in the Doshi file. Now, we also have a form in the Franklin Planner, right, that I can put in there that looks like this, an information record sheet. And so whenever I talk to Gunjan Doshi, I just put all the information in here. I have all the contact information at the top. 
on the 13th, first part of this week, he gave me all this, I wrote down all this information, the class enrollment for the, th the 13th of February. Tom, didn't notice at the bottom, Tom's gonna be hosting the meeting. But see, I keep the information, and so that's why that reference would be 716 Doshi. Where do I keep it in my planner? In your alphabet file? Under my D tab for Doshi, or G for Gunjin, wherever I wanna file that, right? Okay, and then I can find that very quickly. Um, my wife's a snooper. She's not going to be able to see this video, is she? <laughs> my, my wife is very curious, and so she's always looking as we're coming up on a special event, like a, a birthday or an anniversary or something like that. She's always snooping around the house trying to find what I bought her in advance. She's very inquisitive that way, and she's very good. I found the perfect spot. I bought this gift for her. It was really cool. She was going to love it, but I didn't want her to see it early. I have, I found the best place for me to hide this. I have a big box under our bed where all of my college and, and high school sports trophies are. And anytime I, she pulls that out, looks at it, I go, uh, 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 let me tell you where that came from. That thing slams shut so fast. So I know she doesn't look in there. So that's where I hide the stuff. She came to me and she said, who's Bub? I said, what are you talking about? She said, Bub, who is he? I said, I don't know anybody named Bub. What are you talking about? She said, you have him written in your planner. I said, really? Said, yeah, it says gift, and then his name written next to it. Then it clicked. I said, oh, it's not, it's not Bub, it's not a person. It, it's where I hid your anniversary gift. She said, where is it? I said, I can't tell you. Because <laughs> then I'll have to, this is really a good place, and if I tell you, I'll have to find a new place, and that'll be tough. But it's the box under the bed. So, so you can create, see the parentheses will always send me where the information is located. Where is the gift? It's in the box under the bed, right? I didn't think of that right up front, but when the, gift, the word gift gave it away. And so you can create your own. Remember the key to the system is the reference in parentheses will always send you back to the original information no matter where you store it. Does that make sense? So we can find the information that we need very quickly. A lot of people use this system in their, not even using paper at all. They've, they've learned to use their reference in parentheses in their electronic system, because it always sends them where the information is located. But it makes it deadly in the planner. You're familiar with the index? This is the very first filler page of each month. Right behind the monthly calendar tab, the very first page, it's just a lined page. It's where I write down references to information that I don't know when I'll need them. Let's say we're doing the 30-second rule. The first question is, does this have a date? And let's say that this doesn't have a date. Um, but will I need it at some point? Probably. But I don't know when. And so what I'll do is I'll go out to my index for the month of July. I'll put the 16th and Tom Green with the meeting locations. If I ever need to know the meeting location where we met with Tom Green or where we're planning to meet, I can find that in my index. I don't have to go through page by page. I only have to look at one page that month. Does that make sense? The index is just to give me a, a reference to information, important information I've written in there for that month. On the back side, right across the page on the left-hand side, on the back side of your monthly calendar tab is the master task list. How many of you use that? The master task list is a list for things I want to do during that month. At some point, I haven't decided when yet. Lube oil filter. How often do they suggest you do it? Yeah, every three to four months. So let's do, I do mine every four months. So if I do... Let's see, July, August, September, October. So October, four months out, I'll turn to my master task list and I'll write LOF for lube oil filter. That's all I put there. 
all during the month when I do my planning, my weekly planning, I look at my master task list to see what stuff is sitting there waiting for me to come and get it. At some point, I need to put that on a daily task list and schedule an appointment. Does that make sense? You all okay with that? Okay. This is one of my favorite quotes of all time. Men do not care how nobly they live, but only how long they live. Although it is within the reach of every man to live nobly, but within the power of no man to live long. The whole idea of the Franklin planning system is for you to build the productivity pyramid, identify what your highest priorities are, your values, set your goals, things that you can do to bring your behavior in line with that. One of my favorite things that Hiram Smith, one of the founders of the company, the founder of the Franklin Planner, that he always did, he would always put his hand out here and say, here's where I really want to be, these are my values, I've defined the ideal, here's where I'm at in reality. When my daily activities are in concert with my highest priorities, I have a credible claim to inner peace. And remember, we defined inner peace. Well, what did inner peace? Inner peace is having what? Do you remember? Serenity, balance, and harmony in our lives achieved through the appropriate control of events. And that's, folks, that's what it's all about. The planning system not only helps me plan for the important things in the future, but it also becomes a journal for stuff that I've done in the past that was important to me. This is priceless for me. In the 35 years now that I've used a Franklin Planner, <clears throat> never have I lost information that I couldn't find in here that I'd written in here. Can I tell you how many times I've lost information electronically? Because of a glitch. The, it, it's a tool designed to help us take care of the stuff that matters. So the, the, um, the Franklin Planner, this is, this is paper technology. Technology is, is a tool that helps us to become better. And sometimes we don't look at paper as a technology, but by definition it is. And so the Franklin Planner is killer. I mean, the reason, the reason I love it is because it's worked for me for 33 years, and there are times that I kind of fell, away, fell off the wagon, right? When the electronics first came in and everybody was using electronics, I wanted to use electronics. <clears throat> got away from this until I got burned a couple of times and I came back. So, if you have any questions on the mechanics of the planner, um, on the end of the video clip, we're gonna put a, a follow-up or you have contact information for me. Um, if you have questions on, on how we can, on what we've talked about today in any way, please don't hesitate to holler at me and let me help if I can. So thank you for your participation. It's awesome being with you, part of my family. So great to have you here. So it's been an honor for me to be able to share this information with you. Um, the Franklin Planner is back, and uh, we, we've identified these three key words that focus. Now think of the words as you, as you read over those. Powerful, relevant, vital. What do those words mean? Right? We're focusing on the things that really matter most, and this is a tool that will help us to do that. If you have questions of any kind, or if you would like to you know, ask questions for your, uh, that your team might have with this, please don't hesitate to, to holler at me. Let me help however I can. Uh, we'll put the tagline on the end. It's, like, it's Gary Richens and is my name, and my phone number and my contact information, gary.richens at franklincovey.com is my current um, email address where you can contact me. And my phone number, 435-640-4199. Leave a message, I'd be happy to call back. Um, let, me know, let us know how we can help. Um, and as a consultant, uh, I can get really specific with you on how this could benefit you and your team. Um, in being more productive.
being more powerful, relevant, and vital. That's the key.